Hi, and welcome back to the Cooking with Courtney show. I'm Courtney Swain, the Family and Consumer Science Agent here at Cooperative Extension in Stanley County. We're located here at the Ag Center, and today we have quite the celebrity with us here today. This is Ann Hudson, and she's from Cottonville. And you may recognize her because she writes the recipes for the Stanley News and Press. So, Ann, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, Courtney, uh, I'm married to uh, my husband, Ralph Hudson. We have two children, Ashley and Sandra, and we have two grandsons, and um, A.D. and Nicholas, I better mention them, <laughs> and also two great-granddaughters, which are just a doll. And um, we, uh, I have... Uh, been doing recipes for the uh, Stanley News and Press uh, since 1994 wow. in November. We started at Norwood. They bought the Norwood News then. Oh, okay. And uh, so I started with that, and then they decided they wasn't going to continue the Norwood News. And so the they called and asked me if I would like to do it in the Stanley News and Press. So in June of 1995, uh, I started with them. Great. So this year, uh, in November, I'll be doing it 20 years. And I love it. I love doing it. I love talking to all the people. And my recipes come from different sources. Some is mine. Some, uh, I only have 800 cookbooks. <laughs> And I'll get another one if I run into one. <laughs> and um, my family loves to eat. You can look at all of us and tell we love to eat. And uh, I cook for them usually every Sunday. I oh, have lunch good. for my children. And there are some recipes they don't like. Mm -hmm. And there's some recipes get thrown out <laughs> that I try. And some I never try anymore. But then we <laughs> have some favorites and that we uh, do a lot. And my husband, he helps a lot in cooking too. Just a little secret for you at home, he was up here helping us get ready for the show today. So we'll give him a little credit there. Yes, <laughs> he, he helps me a lot. I don't know what I'd do without him. And uh, that's about it. Well, I, I know we're making one of your favorite recipes today. And that's the apple dumpling recipe. As you know, apples are really starting to get in season. So we thought we'd um, do a fun little recipe for you all at home. It's quick, it's easy, and it is good. And boy, it's starting to smell good because we've got our magic one in the oven right now. So we've gone ahead and peeled about three apples, I believe it was, Ann. I think so, yeah. Three or four. I believe it's three. Depends on the size. Mm -hmm. Usually around three. You can see the size of apples that we used. They were pretty small, so we, um, we used about three. And it, they're in water. And you might be wondering, why in the world do we have those in water? And it's because, as many of you know, apples do have a tendency to turn brown. So one thing you can do is put them in a little salt water, and that'll help the... Um, help the oxygen from turning them brown. And that's all it is. There's nothing wrong with that brown apple. It just means a little oxygen got to it. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. So we'll go over here to the cutting board. And do you have any other tricks you like to use to keep your apples from turning brown? Uh, sometimes I might put some lemon juice, but uh, usually it, uh, I don't have a problem if I'm fixing to mm -hmm. use it right then. Right where we had this a little early, and it said a little early. That's right, and you can see where we did peel them. Um, I don't know, do you have to peel them, or that's just the way you've always done uh, it? That, that recipe called for them to be peeled. Now, right. some of them don't, some right. recipes don't, um, of different apple things, you know, but uh, that one did call for peeled apples. And I'm just opening up a, paint, a can of flaky biscuits and just generic brand, name brand, either way, as long as they're flaky. They have to be uh -huh. flaky. Because you've got to pull them apart. That's your fun part. Yes. And they should have 10 in the can. 
So you pull them apart, sort of flatten out this piece. And they kind of pull apart naturally because they're the flat. I usually part. drain this off if it's oh, all right yes, with you. Yes. I'm going, oh, I can. And we did wash our hands before we got started. Yes, we did. <laughs> And we just kind of spread it out, oh, right? Yeah, uh -huh. Just wrap it around just like this. And just place it in your baking dish. These biscuits been laying out, so they're a little bit... Stickier. Uh-huh, sticky. And we just roll those up, so pretty easy. Kind of like pigs in a blanket, but we're making apples in yes, a blanket. Yes, that is. That is. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. That is similar to pigs in the blanket. But it tastes a lot better. Yes. <laughs> now, what are some other recipes you enjoy with apples? Well, we liked uh, fried apple pies. That's my husband's specialty. We use stew your apples, or you can buy applesauce or make your own applesauce. And um, you can use the, you can make your own dough uh, to make your, your own pastry, or you can um, buy canned biscuits and roll them out. And they make really great apple pies. And, uh, then we like uh, stewed apples, just cook them and put some sugar and cinnamon in it. And oh, then we yes. like, uh, we just love apples. Yes. <laughs> apple cake, I have two or three apple cake recipes that uh, gonna, I do. We're gonna show you all one that she brought for us today. There's a young man that just graduated from South and he just loves this apple <laughs> cake I brought today. When he knows I'm going to fix it at church, he's always there. <laughs> and something I like to do with apples is an apple salad. Um, and you may be thinking of the apple salad with carrots and raisin and a little mayonnaise. That's one that seems to uh -huh. be pretty popular at a cookout or a potluck. But something I like to do is use um, leafy greens, spinach, lettuce and I just put either pecans or walnuts and then I put the sliced apples and um, feta cheese or goat cheese and a balsamic vinaigrette. Ooh, I, I love that salad. Sweet and salty. We'll have to maybe we might have to get another dish out here. No, we'll, we'll, we'll move them around. Okay. They can be a little s snug. That's right. Came up with one piece too many. That'll be all right. I might have not pulled the biscuit apart just right. I'm gonna go ahead and get our sauce going that goes on top of that. It's just one cup of water in a saucepan. And you can see I'm using a liquid measuring cup because we used water to measure that with. And then we use a stick of butter or margarine, either one, right? Either Anne? one. Either one's fine. And a cup of sugar, really sweeten that up. And if you want to use brown sugar, you can use brown sugar. Oh, that, I bet that tastes good with the cinnamon. Get that melted. And while we're waiting on that to melt, would you like to tell us a little bit about um, your cookbooks you have over here? Oh, they kept after me to do cookbooks. So uh, I did this one first. And then uh, it sold out. And so we decided to do another one. So I, I did both of those. And they're both sold out. <laughs> <laughs> and they keep wanting me to do another one, but uh, I don't think so. Two's uh, enough. Two's enough. And it has my favorite recipes. My mom was a 
great cook, and some of my mom's recipes is in this first book. And uh, so, uh, and then this other one is some of ours and also healthy eating. When I do my column, I try to do some diabetic recipes because I am a diabetic and my husband is too. And I try to do healthy eating, diabetic, and uh, just regular. So, what are some ways? Is there a way we could make this more diabetic friendly? This recipe? Uh, I don't know what you would want to say. I don't know if Splendor. Oh, they have a new sweetener yes. out. Yes. I haven't tried it, but I'm sure that would work. The, is it the um, stevia? A stevia? Yes. yes. People yes. like that a lot better because it doesn't have quite the aftertaste that Splenda has. Uh huh. Um, and it, I had a lady call just the other day. She asked how she has a stevia plant at home, and she asked how she can make oh. her own stevia and not have to buy it from the grocery store. And all you do is you just dry the leaves, uh -huh. and you can crumble it up, and it, it's a natural sweetener. Oh, I know I learned that. something too as I was researching mm. that for her. Wow. But yes, people really like the stevia. They're very happy with that sweetener because it is natural. It's not a... And two, when they get done, if you... A lot of, them, of times, my kids like to add ice cream to them when they oh, go to yes. eat. Yes. Or, uh, and, uh, or, or you can just cool eat them whip plain. Or, or cool whip whip. cream. Or cool whip. Mm-hmm. I think Sunday when I made them... Part of them had ice cream and part had whipped cream, so. <laughs> Whatever your preference is. And I think, didn't we sprinkle a little we cinnamon did. on we there before? We sprinkled a little cinnamon. We're just about finished here. And then we put the rest in there, didn't we? I think so. Okay. Okay, perfect. Hopefully I don't get to sneezing. Sometimes I start sneezing when I cinnamon. And herbs and spices are always great ways to um, spice up your food a little bit. A lot of times it takes the place of salt or sugar. Um, you can use those instead if you're trying to watch your sodium or your sugar intake. Now, do you use this as a dessert? Oh, I do. Yes, yes. And it really is a lot better with the brown sugar. Oh, I bet. I, I decided to use brown sugar with mine, but the recipe just called for sugar. And so that's why I didn't bring, why I didn't tell you to use brown <laughs> sugar today. <laughs> I think we are ready just about. Have you ever been to the Apple Festival up in the mountains? Oh, uh, no. Uh, I've never been that brave to get in that crowd. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I went to Appalachian, and so we would go every, every year when I was in school there. Uh -huh. it, was, it was a good time. My children have. They go, but uh, uh, we have been, as I said, to the Apple Barn in Pigeon oh, Ford. Yes. And, uh, they they grow apples out there and they have oh goodness they have a lot of wonderful things out there i think we're ready okay and all we have to do is melt that right we don't have to bring it to a boil or which one this one goes in We'll put it in this one here. Yep, that'll be perfect. You want to know if this around? I can get that for you. It can just go around the side. Okay. Let's see. And we have this preheated to 350 degrees. And we're going to put that in there for 30 minutes. And we just want it to turn a nice golden brown Ooh, color. Have a I think our timer just went off, Anne, for our magic one. 
Ooh, it smells good. Ooh, I think that's just perfect. We'll put this right over here. We can dish it up. Ooh, that looks delicious. I've got this spatula here. And put a little bit on. Now, I don't have any ice cream to go with it. Do you like to put some of the juice on top? Yes. Oh, boy, that looks good. And I bet it's extra delicious with a little whipped cream or Our ice cream, ice cream on. on top. Yes. Thank you, Ann, so much for coming on the show today. We are so grateful to have such the celebrity on here and to share some of your wonderful ideas and cooking tips as well as your delicious and tasty recipes with us. And I would also like to thank Stanley Community College for filming today's show. And thank you so much again for watching the Cooking with Courtney show. We'll see you next time.